So before I get into the video, here's a quick breakdown on what I'm going to be discussing today. Firstly, we're going to discuss Zion Williamson's NBA debut and my thoughts on the whole game and how crazy it was. Secondly, we're going to look at the Pelicans and my thoughts on if they can make the playoffs and why I think they can, but what they may need to do to get there. And thirdly, we're going to look at some trade scenarios for the upcoming trade deadline. And I want to know before we get started in the comment section down below, what pieces do you think they need to go after in order for them to make the playoffs? And do you think they can still make the playoffs? And obviously, I want to know about what you thought about Zion Williamson's crazy performance. Anyway, let's get on to the video. So Zion Williamson officially made his NBA debut and it was the craziest debut I've seen in a very, very long time. Zion Williamson is the first player in NBA history to score more than 20 points in less than 20 minutes in their NBA debut. But if you had only watched the first three quarters, you wouldn't have imagined that. Zion Williamson in that last quarter turned the switch on and just went ham. And this video is not about Zion Williamson directly. Yes, there obviously will be a little bit of a discussion about Zion Williamson and his first ever NBA game, but this video is more so about the Pelicans, not necessarily what we learn about Zion Williamson in his first NBA game. I want to talk about the New Orleans Pelicans and now what they could be with Zion Williamson now on the team, even on a minutes restriction. He started the game off looking very slow, and I tweeted he looked like an old veteran player, like an old Sean Kemp or Shaq in his final years, but he also looked like a rookie. He made some clumsy turnovers that didn't really look like Desiree Williamson in college and even through the NBA preseason. But that's to be expected. He's coming off pretty big surgery and he's also making his debut where the pressure is on him. He was nervous and I think we could tell. But then, that last quarter, he brought the Pelicans back into the game. He's hit double the amount of threes that Ben Simmons has hit his entire career. He ended the game with 22 points, and at the start of the fourth, he only had five points. He scored 17 straight fourth quarter points, including four threes, and he also finished the game with seven rebounds, three assists, and of course he did have turnovers, but in the end, it was a phenomenal debut for somebody who looked like he would have almost a quiet first NBA game. But that's why you can't put so much pressure on a rookie because obviously let's say he didn't end up hitting the shots that he hit, he would still be an amazing talent. And you really can't look at each individual game and critique it or look at what he did well because obviously each game is going to be a different game and it just happened to be an exceptional game in his first ever NBA game, but it easily could have gone the other way around. So instead of looking at each individual game, I think we should look at him in this first week, then the first month, then his rookie year as a whole, instead of judging players so soon. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's get into the video. If you remember a few videos ago, I did post my thoughts on Zion Williamson and what we could expect once he returns to the league. And I said in that video that I really expected him to have limited minutes. And obviously we saw that and clearly it was disappointing to watch as an NBA fan and somebody who wanted to see Zion perform. But as for the longevity of his career, it's very important that he is on a minutes restriction just so he can get his body right. Because let's say he didn't have that last and crazy stint in the fourth quarter. A lot of people would be looking at this game and saying, yeah, we need to get his body right, he needs to be healthy, he needs to lose weight, and of course he still needs to do that. But because of the confidence that we saw in that last quarter, it was sad to not see him return back into the game. But at the end of the day, I think we can all understand the reasons why, and it makes sense in the long term. But still, for a team fighting for a playoff spot, it was pretty unfortunate to see. But yeah, obviously it does make a lot of sense. Just as an NBA fan, and even as a Pelicans fan, I'm sure a lot of them would be upset that they couldn't get the win and they couldn't see Zion Williamson enter back into the game in the last few minutes to actually help his team win. And obviously he would be disappointed, but I think as a whole community, we can understand the reasons why. But it does provide a lot of hope and excitement for the Pelicans. This is not a video about Zion and the first game of his NBA career. This is more so about the Pelicans as a whole because I haven't made a video on New Orleans and I think it's very important that we look at this roster and see are they good enough to make the playoffs now that they have Zion Williamson, can they actually make the playoffs? Let's break that down in this video. But before I get started, if you enjoy these types of videos and you enjoyed Zion Williamson's debut, let me know what you thought about the game in the comment section down below. I would really, really appreciate if you guys could drop a like to support the channel. And if you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get NBA content every single week. And hit that notification button so you never miss an upload. With that said, thank you guys for all the support recently. Let's get into the video. 
So firstly, what we noticed with Zion Williamson in this opening game was the fact that he entered the game and he just created so much space. You would assume that somebody that's so big would tend to clog up the paint. But Zion Williamson clearly has a little bit more of an outside shot than people assumed. He's obviously had the chance to work on that outside shot as he hasn't been able to play in the opening season. So that's probably something that has created a positive outcome for his injury so far this season. And so you can automatically tell that when he's in the game, he just creates so much space. When he's in the post, they're going to have to send a double team because it's very hard to stop a player like that one-on-one. -on -one. And if you have Lonzo Ball, who's an improved outside shooter, Brandon Ingram, who's worked on his outside shot, players like Josh Hart, Drew Holiday, and of course, JJ Redick, who's a prolific three-point shooter, it's just amazing what you can build around Zion Williamson. And he is the perfect player for what this Pelicans team needed. And he's also the perfect player that they can build with in the future. But like I said, this isn't about Zion Williamson and his opening game. This is about the Pelicans. So let's talk about somebody like Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram obviously had a pretty rough night. He shot 6 for 22 and 2 for 8. But if you actually watch the game, he definitely picked it up towards the end of the game. And especially in the last quarter after Zion Williamson was on the bench. He ended up with 22 points, which obviously he's had an amazing season so far. Averaging 25.6 points on 47% shooting and 40% from 3 with 6.7 rebounds per game. If you compare that up with a young Kevin Durant, his stats are actually looking very, very good. This graphic was made a few days ago, but you look at the comparison between a young Kevin Durant at 22 years old and Brandon Ingram, and Brandon Ingram looks like he's on a very nice trajectory to turn out to be a great player in this league. He was obviously seen as somebody as a Kevin Durant type entering the league, obviously the second overall pick, same as KD, a very skinny player, same as KD, a guy that looked like he would continue to grow in the league, same as KD. So there are obviously the similarities and he wasn't able to piece them together in LA. Obviously towards the end of last season, he was able to piece it together, but then he got injured. That obviously had an effect on his career at that time because he was unable to play. But now on a new team with a new franchise, he's turning into an exceptional player. And if you could build Zion Williams up along with Brandon Ingram you have two prolific players on that team that can definitely take this team into the playoffs. Lonzo Ball's also playing really well. He didn't start off the year amazing he was benched a few times but over the last couple of games he's definitely got his assist numbers up. Over the past seven games he's only had one game where he's averaged under nine assists and he's also improved on his points per game and even his field goal percentage. He's become a better three-point shooter at 35% which isn't amazing but it's definitely an improvement on his past years and also his field goal percentage is around the same but he's still playing amazing defense as well and that's something that I think Lonzo Ball can definitely pride himself on his defense which hopefully that just continues to grow as well. Because when you think about it, Lonzo Ball and Drew Holiday is a front court, incredible defense. Drew Holiday is still a veteran guy that can definitely play his role on the team. And I think that at the start of the year, they were looking to see what they could get for him in terms of trade. But obviously, he's coming back from an injury. In his first game back against Memphis, he dropped 36 points. And against the San Antonio Spurs, he had a pretty quiet game, only scoring 12 points and shooting one from five for three. But we know what Drew Holiday brings each and every night. So all in all, if you have the defense of Lonzo Ball and Drew Holiday, you can get Zion Williamson healthier and hopefully he can play a few more minutes per game. Brandon Ingram as your main scorer. And then you've got JJ Redick to come off the bench as a sixth man alongside Derek Favors. And then the younger guys in Jackson Hayes, I think is very, very exciting for the future. But I don't think it's just the future. I think this season alone, they can definitely make the playoffs. And here's why. Typically, it's quite hard to see a team with only one all-star like Bradley Bill on the Washington Wizards, Devin Booker on the Phoenix Suns, Carl Anthony Towns on the Minnesota Timberwolves, Trey Young on the Atlanta Hawks. Like, all those guys could potentially be all-stars this year. Brandon Ingram is a potential all-star this year, but clearly he's not good enough to make that playoff push by himself. But now, this Pelicans team is unlike the Timberwolves. It's unlike the Suns, and it's unlike the Wizards and the Hawks, because they actually have a good team around Brandon Ingram. Zion Williamson, despite not playing this season, we all know how great he can be. Drew Holiday was once an All-Star, and is still on the verge of being an All-Star if he can stay healthy. He's still a 20-point per game player. And if they can start piecing a few wins together, get on a winning streak, they have the chance to make the playoffs this season. So when you look at the Western Conference standings, the Pelicans are the fourth worst team in the Western Conference. But that only means they're only three games out of the San Antonio Spurs who are the 8th seed. So it's really not like they're too far out of making the playoffs. And with a guy like Zion Williamson back on this team, it looks like they can definitely be on target to make the playoffs. They currently sit 5th in points per game behind the Bucks, Rockets, Mavericks, Clippers. And those are all very, very, very good teams. 
They sit 18th at 45% field goal shooting as a team, but with Zion Williamson, that will bring them way higher, and the highest of the Los Angeles Lakers on 48.5, so it's really not that far behind. They're third in three-point makes, fifth in three-point percentage. They sit 20th in free throws attempted per game. That will rise with Zion Williamson back. They currently sit 11th in rebounds per game as a team, which is actually pretty solid. So offensively, this team is very, very good. And they actually sit fine alongside some of the better teams in the NBA. It's their defense that lacks. In opponent points per game, they're the second worst behind the Washington Wizards. And that's something I think with Zion Williamson, they can improve on. And I think he makes this team better on the defensive end as well. And with Zion Williamson's athleticism and ability to guard multiple positions, I think that will really help out this team defensively, which is where they lack most. But I think if they want to make a strong push for the playoffs, they're going to need to get a defensive-minded center at this trade deadline. Because when you think about it, their front court defensively is amazing. Drew and Lonzo are very good defenders. You put in Zion Williamson a bit healthier, and with his athleticism and defensive ability, he'll be able to guard multiple positions, which definitely helps this team. And then you really only need that defensive-minded center, and that team defensively is a very strong team, and offensively, they're very good as well, which gives me an indication that this team will be fine, not next year or in the future, because I have no doubt they'll be one of the best teams in the future, but this year alone, if they could get a strong defensive center, they could genuinely be one of the toughest teams to face off against which is very scary to watch because currently with Jackson Hayes, that's who they would want to build into that role. But this season, Jackson Hayes is not that guy, which means they're going to need to probably get somebody this trade deadline. So that's going to be interesting and fun to watch to see who they can go after. Without doing a ton of research, I will make a separate video on it, but I think players that they could go after could be somebody like Tristan Thompson. He's obviously on a pretty hefty contract, but he would be great for this team because they need help on the rebounding side, and he's also a pretty good defender. Hassan Whiteside, if the Blazers go with Nurkic, Whiteside might be expendable. Whiteside could be a very easy trade target to get for the New Orleans Pelicans, and he dramatically changes this team on the defensive end. And I don't think the Raptors would be willing to give up Serge Ibaka, but he's also a guy that can definitely make an impact for this young New Orleans Pelicans team. Tristan Thompson and Whiteside, definitely two guys I think that the New Orleans Pelicans should go after. So let me know down below what you think in the comment section. Do you think the Pelicans can make the playoffs? And I would love to hear who you think they should go after this trade deadline to help them push into the playoff race. Who should they go after and who should they target during the trade deadline? I may make a separate video on that, so stay tuned for that. And if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new for more NBA content every single week, and hit that notification button so you never miss an upload. It's been your boy, Nick Smith. I am out. Peace.